Hi everybody, this is Kida, recording and visual artist, and you're in tune to Long Story Short, keep it locked. Long Story Short, since COVID and after my last musical tour, I am, um, having been an artist before, I mean visual artist before the tour and all of this, my whole life really, I was very refreshed to get um, a long period of time to just really invest in painting and I found that my tour had been very uh, it was kind of heavy on me in terms of like anxiety and dealing with crowds and stuff like that I'm a social person I can deal with people but sometimes having everybody's attention on you can be like a bit much when you're thinking about a million other things that you need to be responsible for so when I got back home, I found it really refreshing to, as I say, do some painting as just a therapy, like that's just my normal thing that I'll do naturally, you know? And so I spent three weeks working on some large commissioned paintings and it was just so relaxing to me. I got lost in a different world. I smoked a lot of herb. I, I, had, a, <laughs> I had a like routine and I think for me, even though I'm like a Virgo and super, I like order. Um, I'm not the most orderly person. And so sticking to like a schedule and stuff, I'd have to be like in an institution to do that because I go with the natural flow of things. So like if I wake up in the morning and I feel like going to the river and I had plans to do X, Y, Z, I just go with my flow of what's the priority at that time. So this helped me to have a rhythm and a, you know, a flow to work with. So because I was so invested in it and I loved what I was doing. I, within that time, started, you know, conceptualizing how I was going to really direct my work because as I said, these three pieces were commissions and so they weren't really my brainchild. Yes, it was my technique and everybody loved my technique and, you know, I was learning myself as well and still am learning my style, learning, you know what stories I want to tell through my art and so um, it it made me want to conceptualize my story what I'm gonna speak about through my art and you know one of the first things that came to mind and something that was at the forefront of my mind having just come off tour um, in Europe was just how I'm viewed and how I experience racism as a mixed race person um, locally where i'm from in my birth land and when i travel like the difference is so <laughs> crazy because here when people see me they're like oh she white you know and when you travel you ain't white you know so you get i've had people looking at me my manager my sister on tour in europe because we're walking around with our suitcases and you know this is the time when they're having a lot of like refugees and stuff so them see you moving through your colored you know they're, they're like everybody's looking at you people were rude anyway the whole point is i had this experience where i was in amsterdam one day and having been stressed out this might have been another tour actually but same europe and um i had an experience where i just took a day i had some time it was the end of the tour and usually we're in amsterdam at that time and I took a day and said, you know what? I'm breaking free from the pact. I'm just gonna walk. I'm just gonna explore by myself. So um, I was just walking through Amsterdam. The streets are kind of small and stuff. And so people are walking by and, you know, having come from Jamaica where you get all of these comments, like you can't touch a road and somebody don't say something. Even if they don't think it, like they literally can't give up the opportunity to say, hey, bro, mean, or this look nice or whatever. So the guy was passing me by and he, I call a mixed guy too, <clears throat> and he's like, Mama Africa, Black Beauty, and he didn't even turn around, like I literally turned around to see if he was speaking to me, but like he kept it moving, it wasn't like he was trying to engage me or anything like that, he literally was just paying me a compliment and it forced me to think a lot about who I am as a colored person how I can tell the story about my experience as well because you kind of get lost in this place of where you don't really belong anywhere or exist anywhere you can you get looks if you speak up for black rights you I've never really tried to identify as a white person because I'm not but I'm just saying like it's weird 
so anyway that compliment that the guy gave me um it kind of made me feel more reassured about how i see myself as a black person you know what i mean and so uh it directed the direction of my artwork and um the body of work that i'm working on right now is actually black beauty and it's focused on so far the black female and just original african ideals of beauty culture hierarchy like we have so much culture and so much um <clears throat> i wouldn't really want to say tra yeah traditions as well and you know but we influence the world so much and i think a lot of the times we as black people don't even realize that it's really these ideas are birthed from us and our culture so um, in my artwork, I want to more reflect that black richness, you know, glorifying black beauty and black culture and in all its shapes, shades, forms, you know, traditions, rituals, everything. So, um, yeah, it's just kind of leaning towards that kind of representation. So, yeah, that's my long, long, long story short. <laughs> Thanks for staying tuned. Long story short, big up. This was Kida. <laughs>